Welcome, my wonderful general chemistry students, to today's Chapter 6, Part 2 lecture on the electronic structure of atoms. After studying today's presentation, which will cover section 6.5 to 6.9, you should be able to do the following. First, explain quantum numbers as detailed in section 6.5. Second, know the general shapes and names of the four different kinds of orbitals. Third, write the longhand or condensed electron configuration of any element on the periodic table. And fourth, know the difference between core electrons and valence electrons. As we discussed in our last lecture, an atom's electron soar around its nucleus in a defined region of space called an orbital. You may remember that I taught you about four different kinds of orbitals, s, p, d, and f, and I showed you the shapes of the s, p, and d orbitals. We can think of orbitals as just being regions of space around the atom's nucleus in which electrons can go. If electrons were cars, orbitals would be their parking spaces. To be able to properly and more deeply understand how and why elements behave the way they do, we need to have a system to describe electrons with further detail. Rest assured that there is just such a system. It's called the system of quantum numbers. So each electron can be described by using four different numbers called quantum numbers. These numbers are kind of like an electron's address. I'll now describe each of these four numbers. The first quantum number is called n, the principal quantum number. This number can be any integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., and describes how far an electron is away from the nucleus. For example, an electron in a 1s orbital has a principal quantum number, n, of 1. An electron in a 3s orbital has a principal quantum number, n, of 3. An electron in a 3p orbital also has a principal quantum number n of 3. An electron in a 4d orbital has a principal quantum number n of 4, and so on. The higher the n value, the higher the electron is in energy, and the further away it is from the nucleus. The second quantum number is L, called the azimuthal quantum number. This number describes which kind of orbital, s, p, d, or f, the electron occupies. An electron in an s orbital, for example, has an l value of 0. An electron in a p orbital has an l value of 1. An electron in a d orbital has an l value of 2. And an electron in an f orbital has an l value of 3. This is shown in the following table, which I have copied from your book. The third quantum number is m sub l, called the magnetic quantum number. This number can be any integer from negative l to positive l, including 0. The magnetic quantum number, m sub l, describes the orbital's three-dimensional orientation in space. For example, you should remember from our previous slide that I just barely showed you that the l quantum number for p orbitals is 1. This means that the m sub l number for p orbitals can be negative 1, 0, or positive 1. And just what does that mean? Well, it means that these three numbers, negative 1, 0, and positive 1, represent three different p orbitals, one along the z-axis, one along the x-axis, and one along the y-axis. The fourth quantum number is m sub s, called the magnetic spin number. The spin number is the last quantum number and is equal to positive or negative one-half. That is, for any two electrons occupying the same orbital, one of them gets assigned a plus one-half spin and the other gets assigned a minus one-half spin. If, for example, two electrons had identical quantum numbers n, l, and m sub l, then we would assign one electron a plus one-half spin and the other a minus one-half spin. This would mean that these two electrons, both shooting around inside the same orbital, are revolving around their individual axes in opposite directions from each other like this. It's important that we have this final fourth quantum number, the m sub s number, or else we couldn't explain how two electrons can simultaneously occupy the same orbital. Why? because the existence of something called the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that no two electrons in the same orbital can have the exact same four quantum numbers. 
In summary then, there are four different quantum numbers which we can assign to different electrons and which function kind of like the electron's address. First quantum number is n, the principal quantum number. It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. It says the distance the electron is from the nucleus. Second number is L, the azimuthal number. Zeros for s orbitals, 1 for p orbitals, 2 for d orbitals, and 3 for f orbitals. Third is the m sub L quantum number. This can be any integer value from negative L to positive L, including 0, and describes the orbital's orientation. And last is m sub s, the magnetic spin number. It can be plus or minus 1 half. So let's do some problems now, beginning with question number 6 from our problem set 6. It asks us, for n equals 4, what are the possible values of L? For L equals 2, what are the possible values for m sub L? And for m sub L equal 2, what are the possible values for L? We'll go ahead and do those problems right now. You're welcome to pause the video here if you wish to try them on your own before I give you the answers. In part B, problem set 6, question 6, we're asked, for L equals 2, what possible values could we have for m sub l? You may remember from a previous slide that m sub l has values of minus l all the way to plus l and every integer in between. So if l equals 2, m sub l can equal minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. Let's see if we can do the reverse. In question C, I'm given m sub l, the magnetic quantum number, as being equal to 2. So what values can l have? The answer is l has to be greater than or equal to 2. The answer is explained because there's no way in which I could have a plus L for my magnetic quantum number and have an L that's smaller than that number. If, for example, L were plus 1, then m sub l would have to be equal to uh, minus 1, 0, or plus 1. And once again, for this problem, it tells us that m sub l equals 2. So the only possible values I could have for l would be any value that is positive 2 or larger. So it could be 2 or 3. Remember that 2 corresponds to a d orbital and 3 corresponds to f orbitals. So the answers are 2 or 3. And now we'll move on to question 7 from problem set 6. Give the values of n, l, and m sub l for each orbital in the 2p subshell and each orbital in the 5d subshell. Once again, if you guys want to, you're welcome to try these on your own before looking at me giving you the answers. In part A, it asks us to come up with n, l, and n sub l values for each orbital in the 2p subshell. So I'm going to write 2p. Now remember, 2 this first number is the n number. p tells us the orbital type. We have to remember that for a p orbital, l equals 1. Then m sub l equals negative l to l, all of the integers in between. So m sub l could equal, in this case, because l is 1, it could be negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So here's the answer. n equals 2, l equals 1, and m sub l equals negative 1, 0, or positive 1.
Now let's see if we can try part B. Come up with quantum values for n, l, and m sub l for each orbital in the 5d subshell. Now remember, 5 tells me the n level, which is the energy level. d means a d orbital. And the l value for d is 2. The m sub l values then can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. So these are the final answers. n equals 5, l equals 2, m sub l equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, or plus 2.